In this video, you will not only learn my personal highly effective morning mobility routine, which will only take you a few minutes a day, but also how to adapt that routine to perfectly match your ability level. My system of teaching is built on the belief that only if you understand the underlying principles of not only how something works, but also why it works, will you be able to own it and adjust it to your needs. You have to understand the rules before you can break it. At the end of the video, I will give you the exact order of exercises that I use every morning so you will have a framework to base your adjustments on. Don't worry if you don't immediately get the big picture, it will all fall into place at the end. With that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, for this mobility routine, we are working on two separate skill levels. A level one, we start with separation movements. Level two will be integration movements. So let me explain that a little bit. In the separation stage, we are trying to separate certain joints and body parts from the rest of the body. Why would we want to do this? Well, first of all, because it's much more simple to understand one single joint movement than a combination of joint movements. However, in real life, you will basically all the time use multi-joint movements. So that's where the integration part comes in. As soon as you understood the range of motion and directions that every single joint is able to do and are trained in doing it from a nervous system perspective, because for example, some people, if you tell them to just bend one finger like this, they are what, they're not able to do it. They will do something like that. That's not because their physical structure is somewhat damaged. It's simply because they haven't used that separation movement probably ever in their life. So the, the nervous system is not very good at doing a connection to just that one line and it will kind of flood over to other nerves as well. And so you will get a sort of um, compound movement. Once you understood how to move everything by itself, we will integrate several movements into one larger movement. This is the integration phase. Now, this will not be the same for every movement, meaning that while on some movements you might still be stuck with uh, the separation phase or like a low level integration phase, maybe just doing two joints at the same time, and some other movements you might be good because of whatever sports you played or previous training you had and you will be able to go to a much more advanced phase. And that's not a problem at all, just with whatever movement and joints we're working, go to that phase that is challenging to you, but not so challenging that you're not able to do the movement correctly. All right? It's just like in physical training, Everything should be difficult, but obviously not too difficult. There also is a combat application for this whole thing. Besides the fact that obviously being more mobile and more flexible is always a good thing, uh, being able to separate parts of your structure from the rest of your body will be immensely valuable. So for example, if someone is holding on to one body part, let's say your arm, and is in control of that. You have two options. You can either fight him for control because for whatever movement you're trying to do, you need to use that body part, or you can just separate that body part and let him have it and just move around. This is gonna look somewhat like this. So I'll, I'll say this arm is under control of the opponent and I'll try to leave it in space, okay? I can still move around quite a lot, as long as I can separate the rest of my body from the arm. I don't have to uh, fight strength against strength with it. This training will in the long run increase your mobility, will give you more range of motion. However, what you need to understand is the principle that we're working with here. We are not stretching any muscles or ligaments. So we're not physically changing your 
um, supportive structure. What we are doing is we are training your nervous system because your body only allows you the range of motion that it thinks you are able to have control over. So it will not give you a certain range of motion if it's kind of doubtful that you will have control at that range of motion in case something happens because that's when you get injured. So this training always needs to be pain free because otherwise your body will do exactly the opposite and it will start preventing you from going that way. So if you happen, especially in the neck, to roll, for example, and hit a position where you feel a tightness or a blockage, you shouldn't even feel pain, but pain is like the last, the last alarm signal for you to stop doing what you're doing. So let's say you feel a tightness, you don't go through that tightness, you just go around it. Okay, we're only using the range of motion that our body gives us and that at our current state is pain free and without resistance. We don't go through resistance, we go around it. What we are doing with this is we are, especially in the morning, we are using all the joints the way they're supposed to be used. We're getting some fluid into the joint gaps and that way everything will run smoother for the day. Starting off with the head. We will move the head in all directions that it is designed to move. Now remember, we have to work within the limits of the cervical spine. That means there will not be a lot of distance that you can actually move without using the, uh, the joints above and below. So we will try to separate the joints because we try to separate each part of the body we are trying to keep the rest of the body more or less motionless so let's start by moving the head in all the directions that it's capable of first one is up and down so basically the chin to the chest and then you look up as high as you can and from the side notice that I'm not doing this so I'm not trying to move the rest of the body just to get more range and feel better because I think um, I must have more mobility because I cover more distance this should stay completely quiet and you're moving your head. If you can only move your head like this bit, that's perfectly fine. Everybody starts somewhere. As long as you remember the separation of the joint and just doing what you can with what you have is more important than trying to go for the maximum range that's possible. Right, next one is the side to side, a kinking side to side. You can use the background as reference. I'm trying to be in the center of that background. So you can see what's moving and what's not. Put a finger underneath your chin so that you know that the chin stays in the same place because all we want to do is kink the head left and right. That was the second movement. The third movement is going to say left and right on a plane. So you imagine you're on a table and you're just looking left and right without the chin bobbing up and down. Next one is sliding forwards and backwards. We're still with our chin on that table and we're sliding forwards and backwards. Now if you look at the shadow underneath my chin you see that my head is moving but other than that you should not see that head bob in any direction. I will show you from the side what I'm doing. I'm sliding that head on that plate of the table, like on a flat surface. The left and right movement is even smaller. 
You can see the only thing moving is my head left and right, slightly. Right now, circular motion. Circular motion is already an integrative motion because now we're using all of these directions and we're going in circles. Everybody has done that in school. Now this is one of the movements that has the most potential for injury because the head is quite heavy and you can get quite a lot of speed if you whip the head around and think like, wow, this is fun, okay? But at that point, you're releasing control, the muscular control that you have, and are just hoping that your, uh, um, your spine and your ligaments are going to prevent anything bad from happening. And that's not a good idea. I highly discourage that. Always have total control. If you remember what I said in the beginning, your body otherwise will prevent you from doing stupid things. Unfortunately, sometimes it only prevents you after that stupid thing has led to an injury. Next one. Now we're doing the a circular shift on that horizontal level, which means we're going up, left, back, right. So this. So that was the head part. You could see we have some movements for separation and some movements for integration. The last two were for integration. Repetitions wise, I was told in Japan that you should do it as many times each movement as your age. Now that's quite a lot for me and I'm actually somewhat too lazy and it would take quite a long time to do it that often. I do it 10 times in the morning. Why? Because that way I don't really have an excuse to say like, oh, it'll, it'll take too long, I don't have the time. I can go through it. And I found that 10 gives me at least somewhat of a, a wake-up call to my system. Do whatever number you like. If you are just a beginner, I would suggest you do more repetitions. If you want to improve faster, I suggest you do more repetitions. If you have a certain goal and want to get to a certain high level, I suggest you do more repetitions. Okay, next one. Fingers, hands, elbows, shoulders. So we're going from the top down and from the outside in, roughly speaking, okay? For fingers, we're trying to use the fingers and fold them one by one. Remember, this is separation, okay? So you could just fold them one by one and open. Fold them one by one and open. You could do fold them one by one and then reverse open them one by one. Fold them and reverse it, okay? Those are the two easier ones. Now, what you wanna get to is you wanna do a wave-like motion, which means I'm folding them and I'm opening them. So the first one I fold is also the first one I open back up again. Why are we doing this? Because eventually this movement will nicely tie in with a wrist roll. Okay? The other two movements won't. So eventually it's a natural way of moving and we want to try to stay natural. There's no point in training unnatural movements because there's a reason why nature gave us certain things and not others. Let's try to trust nature and not reinvent everything. So that was finger movements. Next thing, the simple wrist roll, okay? And you can already see, you're, you're basically naturally doing something with your fingers. No one is doing this, okay? Even though that wouldn't be wrong. So. It doesn't matter if your body does use multiple joints naturally, as long as your mind is focused on what you're doing with your wrist in this movement or in whatever movement, focus on the joint that you're trying to separate. Okay, if other stuff kind of moves with it, that's fine for some things like the fingers here, that's not important. Even though you could say for separation, it's probably better 
to try to completely relax the fingers because in case someone is holding on to your fingers you might want to not move them with the wrist okay so those are the separation wrist rolls always in both directions so if I say 10 repetitions I'm talking about 10 repetitions one way and then 10 repetitions the other way as well next one is we are now uh, resting imaginary locking our fingers onto an object and locking our elbow onto an object like this okay fingers locked elbows locked and now we're trying to rotate the wrist around so it will go wrist up down And this is already an integration move, okay? Why? Because we have to focus on two other spots to move a third one. Okay, I'll show you from the front as well. On this one, our hands, we're starting off like this. Fists and shoulders are at the same height. Now what we're doing is we're pulling the hands in a little bit as we are rolling the elbows outward. Okay, then we're keeping the hands where they are, same height all the time. Like they just move forwards and backwards. Otherwise we couldn't move anything. The elbows drop down and in as far as you can and then you push them back out like this so again there's two spots basically staying the same and one does the maximum rotation it can the maximum range of motion in any direction obviously with the help of the shoulder this is just passively being moved let me show you from the front so elbows come out to the side Elbows drop down and in, and elbows are extended again. Whoop. 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 Okay. Next one, shoulder. Separation for shoulder. And you can have that hand up here, or you can let, leave it hanging. I kind of like it up here and extend it because it kind of shows you how big a, um, a circle you're doing with your shoulders. But I'll show you from this one. You do big rotation. So shoulders up and down would be the most basic separation movement. Shoulders forward. So rolling in and rolling back would be the second one. Okay. And now we're taking both of these movements together in order to do a circular movement. So we're going up, forward, back, up, forward, back, right? Nothing new under the sun. I'm stealing that quote because it's true. We've all done this movement before, okay? Maybe not that precise. Well, remember, you're trying to get the maximum range of motion when you're doing this. You're not just uh, doing a couple of shoulder rolls to get some blood flow in. No, we actually want to teach our nervous system how much range it has. Okay, so if we show that, look, you can get the shoulders all the way back to here and all the way to the front like this and all the way up to here and down to here, then we got something new to work with. Okay, so we did separation and integration for the shoulder. Now let's put that into practice. Um, remember I said you can keep your arms straight and that will show you, because you can look at it now, if you're doing all directions and for how much distance so you can also do these 
alternating and forward and if you do this you will see that your spine is already trying to move with it a little bit and that is fine okay <clears throat> because this is already sort of an integrative movement if you want to do this as a separation movement again you would have to make sure that your spine is not moving at all and in that case doing two different movements a front and back makes it more difficult so in that case this would definitely be the first step before you're doing this if you want to keep your spine immovable but you know you can twist the thoracic spine a little bit especially if you've been doing the chest series before you've been doing that exercise that's why I said like we're roughly going head to toes and fingers to center because some of these exercises you can switch the position a little bit and depending on which one you do first the other one is easier or the other way around separation movements for the shoulder of course would be large arm circles arm circles to the side arm circles above and then you can also do figure eights figure eights is the advanced version of the circle so you can do this and if you do this make it more efficient especially if you are training for any kind of combat application so use a movement that mimics a cut or a strike with a weapon so hand is up because this is the way you would carry the axe or the blade and you'll go whoop flip whoop flip you can do your 45 degree angles in a nice figure eight the other one too both at the same time all good so the next shoulder and elbow integration exercise we're going to start out hands at shoulder level and we're going to do circles above the shoulder level look what my hands are doing and then the other way around now I'm doing hands down and then you got the same thing below shoulder level okay and you have to turn your hands at this point otherwise it's not gonna work out and the other way around okay now with this one this is another spot where you might feel tightness in the shoulder don't force the movement out here if you're feeling tight okay in that case like use roll your shoulders forwards and your upper body a little to take that pressure off because this is basically you going into a shoulder lock by yourself so if you're a type a personality chill out okay we're saying we're not going through resistance we're going around if you go through resistance on this one you can seriously fuck up your shoulder and you don't even need anyone else's help right so we don't want to do that so once you did the upper side and the lower side if you're eventually good enough you can just go straight into that complex integrative movement okay that i'm going to show you next so now we're going to do figure eights meaning we're going above and below and above and below and the other way around as well okay so for the teapot drill you imagine you have teapots in your hands with tea in it and they obviously have to face upward all the time otherwise you're spilling the tea there are four positions position one position two so 
over your head. Position three and position four. Okay. And you're basically just switching from one position to the next, to the next, and so on. So the movement is not really difficult if you understand that. You just have to move from one position to the next. Starting off like this, going in, going out, coming back up. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, and of course the other way around. The cool thing about it is you can start like dance-like routines where you're doing different rhythms of that same movement, right? Both at the same time. This is probably the easiest to not lose track of. And this will then, as you see, integrate much more of your body into that movement. Okay, and this is where we eventually want to go. It should all be playful because as long as you're in a playful mood, you learn faster and you discover much more new things than if you're just trying to be strict and like have specific angles and all that kind all the time. Don't get me wrong, you got to understand the rules first before you can break them. So that's why you have to start with the separation phase and only after you understood all the separate movements in itself, then you can start you know, mixing stuff together and improvising and having, actually having fun with it. <laughs> the spinal series. We already covered the cervical spine. Now we're going to go to the thoracic spine. Thoracic spine, we already did a shoulder movement. The shoulder movements forwards and backwards, okay? Now this may look somewhat similar in the next movement, but it's not. This one means we're keeping the shoulders in that position space where they are. Let's say someone is grabbing our shoulders and we're moving our chest back and forwards. So I will show you this one from the side. Just look at the background. I'm not doing this, where my chest stays where it is and my shoulders move. My shoulders stay where they are and my chest comes forward and back. It helps to put your hands on your um, thighs because then you will realize when you're doing this and your hands go away that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It also helps if you have someone correcting you or if you film yourself or if you do it in front of a mirror. So that was front and back. The next one, same principle, but we're doing side to side. Now on the side to side, I will show you from the front my head and my hips should stay in the same spot. You can see there is not a lot of movement there, okay? This is different from the neck exercise what we did, where the shoulders stayed in the same spot and we were moving our head left and right. Now the head stays and we are moving the shoulders. Obviously not very much because the thoracic spine is not designed to move to the left and right a lot. Now we are integrating both of these movements. This means we are starting off pushing forward, left, back, right. Okay, and again, the head should not be moving too much. Of course, it will move a slight bit. And both directions. Showing you from the side. Now, if I say don't go through tension and, and don't use force or anything, 
I don't mean don't use muscle, okay? Of course you want to use muscle because you want to push or pull whatever body part you're working at into end range. And that can use a lot of strength. However, only use the strength up to the point where you encounter a tight spot, blockage, or God forbid, pain. You can see that when I'm moving my chest, I'm also affecting the joints above and below because they will be sort of moved a little bit by the moving chest and will try to accommodate and balance everything. <clears throat> We're going down. Next thing is small hip circles. For the small hip circles, you want to use the most range of motion that you can. So you want to push it forward. Your glutes should be really contracting to push the hip forward as far as you can. Then you're moving to the left. You're really pushing all the way left as far as your hip joint goes. To the rear. Your lower back is going to pull up your hip. And to the right. You don't be stiff in the knees, okay? Be soft in the knees. The knees and the feet will have to adjust, otherwise your hip can't move, okay? So you will also feel that in your muscles, okay? Shoulders should stay pretty much in the same position. So if you wanna keep your hands here, right from the side, Next one, figure eight with your hip. For the figure eight, your hip is centered when it's right there, okay? So you have front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and we're gonna go through all the points. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly turn my hip so that now it's on a diagonal. And then I'm going to push the hip as far as I can into the hip joint to reach the farthest front left spot with my left hip that I can. Now I'm going to push it backwards with this leg and make a half circle and I'm kind of grinding through the hip joint here, okay? This is how it's supposed to feel. Now I'm at the rear left and my hip is basically diagonal again. So now I'm pushing from this point up to that point. This is basically a straight line. So I'm doing an X and two half circles. Now next half circle from the front right to the rear right position. Now a straight line through the X again. Half circle, half circle, okay? And your shoulder should again stay straight. The point is that let's say you're carrying a rifle or a pistol and someone bumps into you, you have the ability to adjust, keep your balance, while still being able to do quite a lot of movement with your lower body separated from your upper body. Changing direction, same deal. And you can also, if you're doing extreme movements, you can lose the full contact between your, the soles of your feet and the ground. Okay, so it's okay if you get onto the side of the foot. That's fine, right? As long as you still have balance and control. Next one, large hip circles. For the large hip circles, your head and your feet stay in position. Your body, does a big rotation around. So you can imagine like a, a bamboo stick who is held in the, in the top and the bottom and is bent and then that bend makes a big circle, okay? Again, you can use all the movement in your legs, in your feet that you can have. Let me get back here so you can maybe see it a little bit better. And your arms are just hanging loosely, okay?
remember like a bamboo stick okay so if I'm sideways here I'm not I'm not doing this that's not a bamboo stick that's a broken something okay I'm straight like this So I'm trying to be flexible and look smooth. Now that we did the hip and the shoulders and the arms, we can do a snaky movement. And it's just going to be you're throwing one arm from the shoulder forward, okay? Relaxed and pulling it back. The movement really is coming from the hips, okay? You look at it from the side. For the legs, you can do all these movements separately to warm them up, okay? You can rotate in and out. Knee is not higher than 90 degrees, otherwise you may get some uh, tightness in your hip. Second one, rotating from the hip. And then you can do the same thing from this position. And the last one is basically a kick, like this. The full movement is a figure eight with your leg. And it looks like this. You come up slightly past the center line from the angle, okay? Not higher than 90 degrees. Then you push your knee outward as far as you can, and then you kick to the ground and let it fall through. At this point, you pull your heel up. You rotate it out and you do the same kick forward. Out, backward, forward. From the side, I'll show you with this leg. And the other way around. That way you get all the different joints in all the directions they're supposed to be going. Okay, for feet you can do, you know, your regular foot circles both directions. And then you can do them on the ground. On the ground, you rotate over your big toe, back like this, and then the other way around as well. Okay? Hey, I know you and your friends always share fun stuff over social media. I do too. So why don't you take a couple of seconds to share this video with all your friends who don't have a good morning mobility routine yet. Because let's be honest, everybody could improve their well-being if they would spend a couple of minutes every morning to work on their mobility. Sharing this video is a way for you to make the lives of those people that you care for a little bit better and it doesn't even cost you anything. Also, it will really help me out if you do that. Okay, as promised, now a quick run through of exactly the order of exercises that I do for my personal mobility routine. Now remember, you will have to adjust the exercise for whatever level you feel confident on, right? So even though I may be doing some integration exercises, you maybe have to split that up into the respective separation exercises. Okay, I'll start off with the head and I'm going from the easy movements to the difficult ones. So I start off with down up, then I go to left right, then I go to this one, and then I go to shifting forwards and backwards on the plane, 
shifting left and right on the plane. And then I start with rotations on the plane and then head circles. So you could see I do separation and integration exercises for the neck because I feel that my neck needs a lot of work. Next I go to the fingers. I start off finger waves, then I do wrist rotations with finger waves, then I go to wrist circles, elbow circles, for shoulders I'm using this exercise. Then I'm going thoracic spine and I start off right away with the chest circles. Then I go to the shoulder figure eight and I'm using hand movements and finger movements with it. Then I'm going small hip circles, hip figure eight, large hip circles, next is the leg complex and then finally I finish up with ankle rotations and at the end, the toe rolls. I hope I was able to explain to you the principles behind my mobility routine and that you now feel confident enough to create your own version of it. If anything is still unclear, please don't hesitate and ask your questions in the comment section. I will try to answer them as fast as possible. Also let me know if you would like me to do a follow along version of my morning mobility routine. Remember, it's not about the destination, but it's all about the journey. I wish you all the best on your journey. I'm here to help you. Until next time.